We live in a world of contrasts. It's not usually like this. It's more often like this. Driving in the fog, driving at dusk, driving in, in overcast situations, gray on gray, various shades of gray on gray. This is part of the challenge of those who have a posterior vitreous detachment. Now remember, when you had your vision check last time, they put a chart like this with 100% black against virtual 100% white to give you the, the greatest contrast possible. What if they were to give you a chart that looks like this? I think this is like 60% gray against a 50% uh, uh, gray background. You start lowering that contrast and it starts to become a lot more difficult. And people who've had a posterior vitreous detachment have even more problems. So let's talk a little bit about a posterior vitreous detachment. These are very common, not to be confused with a retinate detachment, which can be potentially vision threatening. This is not considered to be pathology. It's not considered to be an eye health problem. It's considered to be an age-related phenomenon. We have PVDs. What is it? Well, this space here in the eye is a three-dimensional globe, of course, and it's filled with a gel. This is the vitreous. The vitreous is mostly water. There's some proteins. There's some uh, fancy uh, complex sugars in there. That gel is surrounded by a plasticky membrane, like a, like a baggie or a sac. What happens with a posterior vitreous detachment is that there is a separation of the back part of that sac away from the back part, from the, from the eye. So in cross-section, it'll look about something like this, where you have this membrane now suspended, mostly in the center part of the eye. There is some shifting and movement of that because it's a little bit loose now. Um, and it's mostly clear, but not perfectly clear, just like this is mostly clear, but not perfectly clear. And especially if that membrane is moving around where you're trying to look through this, then you have edges and you have folds and you have areas where it might collapse down there. So uh, although it's transparent, uh, it can be problematic. Now, one of the things that happens with a PVD that nobody talks about is how it affects your contrast sensitivity. What's that? Well, contrast sensitivity is your ability to discriminate different shades of gray. And people who've had a PVD will have, on average, about a 50% 50% reduction in their contrast sensitivity. Nobody's measuring contrast sensitivity. So when that person goes to their doctor and says, it's blurry, it's not crisp, I don't know, it's, you know, the doctor's like, I don't know, it looks pretty good. You know, your 2020 vision, right? And your retina is healthy and your lens is clear. Everything looks pretty good. I'm aware of it. I'm the floater doctor. I treat floaters all the time. So I, I'm looking for that membrane. I know that that can affect their vision. It may not be the best target for the laser, but I can usually break that open and, and open that up and at least have that central area a lot clearer. The vitreous detachments are common. We'll see them in about 25% of 60 year olds, about 60% of 80 year olds. So that's common. Uh, if you're very nearsighted, you know, if your, your eyeglasses or contact lens prescription is minus four, minus six, minus eight or more in some cases, uh, those people tend to get vitreous detachments at a younger age and that membrane is just hazier and less transparent. It's more like trying to look through frosted glass or um, uh, wax paper, it, you know, it's just not very, very clear. So, so they have an even greater reduction in the quality of their vision. So that's a brief uh, summary of a PVD. Um, it's not something that doctors normally talk about. It's not something they normally would address. Um, and uh, that hopefully helps explain how the PVD is related to the decrease in the quality of vision and contrast sensitivity.